Hi, I'm Daryl Dickinson, board member of the Wenatchee Valley uh, Senior Activity Center, and today we have a very special guest uh, from the Red Cross, and uh, we're going to be talking about certain things that uh, services that they provide. Uh, but I'd like to welcome Doug Jones to our uh, Vibrant Living program today. Thank you, Daryl. Doug, tell us uh, a little bit about what what is your role with the Red Cross. So I've been a board member with the Red Cross for probably about since 2007, so several years. Um, I started as a board member when it was the Apple Valley chapter, uh, just here in, here locally in Wenatchee, and about oh five years after that, uh, there was kind of a recon reconsolidation and a reorganization of the Red Cross, and the chapter combined with the Spokane chapter and became the Inland Northwest chapter. So uh, I'm now on the Inland Northwest chapter um, board, uh, Red Cross board, and uh, uh, support definitely the Wenatchee regional local efforts that the Red Cross uh, does here, here, here regionally. So. And how, how long have you been doing that? Like I said, boy, a long time, like 2007 is when I got on the board here. So uh, involved in the, in the board and just doing different activities, supporting, um, you know, uh, fire alarm installations, mm -hmm. uh, blood drives, definitely. Um, I'm a blood donor myself, obviously, and that, that's very important. Um, and so supporting those drives. Uh, I work for Confluence Health now as their, as their emergency preparedness director. Um, and, um, you know, we, we sponsor blood drives there just because we know it's very important to sure. get the blood to where it's needed uh, yeah. most, so to save, save lives. Absolutely. Yeah, I've just recently become aware of how important blood is, okay. you know, and it's basically, if you run out of it, that's not a good thing. Oh, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We, uh, it's definitely a consideration when we look at our plans at the hospital as far as mass casualty incidents. I mean, blood is super important to make sure that you always have on hand. Uh, and that supply, keeping that supply uh, up and, and available is so important. So. Yeah, great. Yeah. By the way, uh, Senior Activity Center is the name of the uh, organization here. So we do have a lot of activity going on in the background here. One of our uh, classes called SAILS, Stay Active and Independent for Life. Oh, wow. Yeah, so Great. Um, why did you get involved in, you know, the Red Cross specifically? Uh, and I don't know if you're involved in other things as well, but sure. tell us a little bit about what is it that, you know, stimulates you to yeah. do this work? Uh, I, like, uh, so I've served with, with the police department here at Wenatchee for 25 years, and uh, when I became a captain at the Wenatchee Police Department, I thought it would be a good fit to really join the Red Cross, and uh, a lot of it was really in response to their disaster response, you know, when there was fires and things like that, Red Cross always always responds, make sure um, they provide housing for the people that have been displaced from, from disasters, whether it be fires or what have you. And just having that, that connection between uh, law enforcement and, and fire department, which we're obviously very close with as well, and the Red Cross was a really good uh, you know, uh, marriage of, of resources that came together to help people at, the, at you know, critical times in their lives when they've lost their homes, when they've, you know, uh, floods have, 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 have uh, you know, uh, washed their homes away or what, what have you. So just a really good partnership. That's really what I was seeking for and, and kind of ma making sure those partnerships worked uh, when needed most. Great. Uh, so, by the way, uh, thank you for your service for uh, the police department for 25 years, you said, here. Mm -hmm. And uh, now you're uh, uh, working in security, is it, with Confluence? I'm the director of emergency preparedness and security. So, okay, uh, emergency, both those so emergency preparedness mm -hmm. and Red Cross, again, that sort right, of exactly, overlaps, doesn't exactly. it? Exactly, yeah. Uh, what are some of the things that the Red Cross does here in our area? I know we have wildfires. Sure. It's sort of a common thing. Uh, are, are there any other specific uh, disasters or uh, emergencies things that the Red Cross gets involved in here? Absolutely. I mean, uh, it's, it's been a relatively good fire year as far as, you know, not affecting a lot of communities, some communities, but in the past, as we've seen up north, the wildfires have really devastated communities. And the Red Cross has just been phenomenal in sending volunteers to set up the shelters. And I, I visited those shelters and, and just the, 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 um, the needs that they meet for people that have been displaced, just go someplace to sleep, to get resources. And it's not just the shelters. Uh, the Red Cross provides a lot of follow-up uh, um, resources as well and help once people you know, get out of the shelters and into more temporary uh, housing, things like that. So it's really a, um, amazing what the Red Cross does for communities in, when disaster strikes. And so that whole uh, um, disaster response is, is huge. Um, the other thing that we're that is big that we've talked about is the blood is the blood drives. Um, when disaster strikes, 
blood is needed. Okay. And it takes about three days for blood to get processed. So it's really important before the disaster strikes to make sure our supplies of blood at the Red Cross are sufficient to meet the needs of you know, mass casualty or, or disaster events before the event. So that's why we really stress um, these blood drives and making sure that we can uh, keep our stocks up for the times that they're needed most. Great. So how, are, how is the Red Cross funded? But Red Cross is funded by donations, uh, and I don't know the numbers, but I think it's like 90%. It's, it's a very high number of, of percentage-wise of, of, of donated funds go directly to disaster response and, and other services. Uh, they have a very low administrative cost, um, and I think it's like 85% or something like that. What if your donation uh, goes to directly impact the lives of people that need it most. Great. Um, I understand that your role, you're actually a volunteer, is that right? Well, I, on the board, on, on the board as a volunteer, I've also helped out with, um, like I said before, the um, uh, installing fire, fire alarms and helms. That, that's a volunteer thing that, that we, in fact, we have an event coming up, I think, this Saturday or the next Saturday. Um, and so we basically go into homes and we knock on doors and we say, can we check your fire alarm to make sure they're updated and they're updated and they're working? Now, so many homes that we go into, uh, people uh, have fire alarms, but they aren't. They don't work. The battery's dead. Things like that. So we make sure for free, uh, or for I shouldn't say free by the by um, donations, generous donations from community members, we're able to go in and provide fire alarms to these homes, to, and been shown through statistically in these communities to save lives when fire strikes. Sure. So. So are uh, you always looking for other volunteers? Absolutely, absolutely. We have lots of different ways people can volunteer, um, specifically in blood services right now. We're certainly looking for what we call um, Red Cross blood donor ambassadors. So when we have blood drives uh, at different locations, we're looking for people that can help check people in, kind of explain the process, um, you know, kind of put people at ease that might be first time donors as far as the process, things like that, just to kind of help those drives. Um, so that's one of the positions I know that we're really looking for now, somebody to be that blood, blood donor ambassador um, and, and help out at these events. I think we have at least four or five blood drives scheduled in the next month. So that's where... Uh, all you know, here in the all local here in area. The area. Uh, a couple at Pibus, I think, one at the church, things like that. So, um, so we, need, we need volunteers for that. Um, we also, um, another service we do is we, is we provide, we transport blood. So when people give blood and it goes to our different, different locations, we need people to transport it to where it's needed most, whether typically to, to hospitals. Um, so that is typically done by volunteers. I think you mentioned earlier, uh, you've been in hospitals and seen the volunteers yeah. be, uh, you know, moving blood around, and those are all volunteers. And so that's what we need too, somebody to be, uh, you know, uh, get called up and say, hey, we need blood to go from here, from point A to point B, can you do that? And that really meets an immediate need oftentimes for people that are in, in you know, uh, you know life-saving need of blood to get blood from one place to another. You mentioned earlier that you were a blood donor yourself. Uh, could you kind of explain to our viewing audience, you know, what is that process about? Because I think a lot of people have no idea or they see it as maybe a scary yeah. kind of a thing. Yeah, uh, it, it, it's a process that usually takes about an hour. Um, you go on to uh, the website redcross.blood, redcrossblood.org, redcrossblood.org, and you can see and you put in your zip code and you can see where the uh, upcoming blood drives are and then you can register or make an appointment to, to, to give blood. Um, if it's your first time, you'll go in and, and you'll kind of read through some documents that kind of kind of outline different medications and things that, that if you're on, you can't give blood. So there's a lot of, a lot of things to wade through as far as whether you're eligible to give blood, but most people are. Um, so uh, different locations, maybe where you've traveled uh, in the past, things like that. So there's some uh, criteria you have to kind of read through to make sure that you're eligible to give blood. Uh, and once you, once you do that, then they, uh, they take you back. They, they do give it, <laughs> one of the worst things I think is that it's a finger prick because they, they prick your finger to make sure that they, you have enough, um, now they're looking for iron or something in your blood. So to make sure we'll you- see if there's any in there, maybe. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So they, they prick, prick that, they do a little test to make sure that, that uh, your blood's good to go. And then they uh, take you back, real friendly uh, phlebotomists take the blood and they're, they're very well trained. Um, and you'd sit there and you uh, uh, pump out the blood. They ask you to squeeze while they're uh, doing that. Um, relatively painless. Um, and the pain that it, you know, the discomfort, I should say, is well worth, I think, the feeling and the gratification of knowing that your blood is going to go help save somebody's life. And that's, and that's really important. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Anything else, Doug, that you'd like to share with our viewing audience about, you know, the Red Cross or, uh, you know, anything that you've been involved in here in the community? Boy, that's a big question. There are, you know, the Red Cross, like I said, I, the reason I've been in it for so long is because uh, they're just amazing people and, and amazing volunteers. And I, I would just, I guess, reach out to your, um, to your viewers and say uh, there's always a need in the Red Cross uh, to get great volunteers to continue to help people in the community. And that's really what it's about, really community members helping community members. Okay, uh, you know, it could be my house that burns tomorrow, and, I, and I'm calling the Red Cross. So it's, it's, um, it's a service that really is community-focused, and uh, the volunteers make a huge part of that, you know, feeling, making, right. feel, making people feel, you know, cared for in time of crisis. So right. if that's what you're into and what you get great benefit from, please, please give us a call, and we'll, we'll get you lined up. All right, and that's kind of was my next question in terms of if people are interested, how do they get involved? Is there a website, uh, an sure. office, or how do they contact you and you know, sign up, so to speak, as a volunteer? Well, we have a local uh, volunteer coordinator, a recruitment specialist, and that's Carrie Strain, um, and she can be reached at 509. 679-8795. That's 509-679-8795. Um, and so, and or you can call our local Red Cross office uh, either way, but that's that's really how you get connected. Um, and uh, yeah. So. Great. Thanks again for your service. All right. Thank Both, you. Uh, I appreciate as the a time. law enforcement person and I also understand a veteran. Uh, uh, yes. So yeah. Thank you for thank, your time thank and you your service. Much. Appreciate it.